the composition of gross estate. We said that our formula uh, for the tax base in computing transfer taxes, uh, transfer taxes are based on the net. Uh, whether it be estate tax or donor's tax, based on the net. Now we have the net taxable estate or the net taxable gifts, as the case may be. Now, and when we say the net, we have the gross figures less the allowable deductions. Gross estate in this case, less allowable deductions equals the net taxable estate. Now, I will be discussing the composition of gross estate. Let us now classify the properties that would be included in the gross estate into two. Let us categorize into two. And by the way, our evaluation, uh, death is the material period and uh, the valuation of the properties, uh, generally speaking, fair market value at the time of death of the decedent. Uh. Now, the first category we have the properties physically present in the estate of the decedent. Huh? These are the properties that are still owned by decedent at the time of his death to the extent of his equity or interest in such property. Say, it's a co-ownership to the uh, extent of whatever would be the equity or interest of our decedent. Now, whether as exclusive owner, conjugal, or community property owner. Uh, now, for this first category, it is simple. Eh? Uh, that is why I said these are the properties physically present in the uh, estate of the decedent. At the time of the death of the decedent, these are the properties registered in his name. Now, whether it be real property, uh, personal property, tangible or intangible, personal properties. Eh? But these are the properties registered in in the name, no, the title, the no, certificate of registration or CR, certificate of stock, the business, no, registered in the name of our decedent. That is why physically present in the estate of the decedent. By the way, no, the composition of gross estate, if no, our decedent is married, legally married, we have the exclusive properties of our no, decedent, exclusive para fernal or no, capital property of our decedent, as well as the 100%, no, the conjugal or community properties no, of the, the spouses. 100% yan, kasi we can claim no, the share of surviving spouse as allowable deduction. Eh? Exclusive properties of our Decedent and the conjugal or community common properties of the spouses. Eh? Now, for the second category, these are the properties no longer present in the estate. Why? Because these are assets or properties owned by decedent during his lifetime but were no longer owned by him at the time of his death. Ma'am, no? Possible pala yun, no? that no, the property has been transferred already during the lifetime of the no, decedent but will be included in the gross estate? Yes. That is why this second category is the no, is a source of dispute no, and issues no, because no, the property or properties no, have been transferred already during lifetime and perhaps no, the necessary tax, say donor's tax, has been paid already by the no, donor but eventually later on will form part pala of the gross estate. No? And no, the estate will be assessed by the BIR. No? Now, how no, would this be possible? No? And what is the reason? Eh? Now, perhaps because it is the no, the death, no? the thought of death that motivates the transfer no? in this second category. No? But, all, no? but always remember that no? it depends upon the circumstances, surrounding circumstances of each case. No? Okay. Now, for our second category, no? first 
concept is the transfer in contemplation of death. As the term itself suggests, no? it's in contemplation of death. Now, this is a transfer made during lifetime, no? but it is the thought of death that motivates the transfer. No? It is the thought of death that the no? donor, sooner or later, no? he will die. It is the thought of death that motivates him to transfer his no? properties no? to doni or donis, no? the transferees or the beneficiaries. Eh? But there are factors that would, kumbaga, na, some um, red flags, na, some factors or indicia that would somehow na, uh, make the BAR arrive at a na, conclusion na, that that is a transfer in contemplation of death. Eh? But of course, you can contest. It is not a transfer in contemplation of death. It is a donation inter vivos and not donation mortis causa. Huh? Yeah, there are issues on the second category because these properties were already transferred during lifetime but eventually later on will be included in the gross estate uh, and uh, you will be paying or you will be assessed uh, uh, accordingly depending on the valuation because if it is donation it's not fair market value at the time of donation. If it is not uh, um, Succession, the fair market value at the time of death. Huh? Now, the circumstances to consider may be the length of time between the gift and the date of death. Huh? A short interval suggests the conclusion that the thought of death was in the decedent's mind. Yon, huh? And a long interval of time suggests the opposite. Huh? And also, no, the concurrent making of a will or making a will within a short period after na, the transfer now, would somehow be an indicator that that is a transfer in contemplation of death. But again, no, no you can contest. No, you can contest because no, it is always dependent upon, no, you need to establish that that is a transfer in contemplation of death. Eh? If you will be assessed by, no, by the BIR. Now, let us have these situations. When the doctor informed Densho that he is suffering from terminal cancer, he decided to donate his house and lot worth 1 million pesos. Let, na, let us assume that that 1 million eh, pesos na, is the fair market value na, at the time of donation. Eh? Now, that is to his friend Migay. Is this a transfer in contemplation of na, death? Ayon, na. Now, is it the thought of death that motivates Densho to transfer or donate this na, property to his friend Migay? If that is so, it is a transfer in contemplation of death. Na? And in the problem, na, now, Densho, he knew, na, he was informed that he is suffering from terminal cancer. And that is why he decided to donate his house and lot. Uh, to his friend. Uh, now, is this a transfer in contemplation of death? Yes. Uh, um, this is a transfer in contemplation of death, but the valuation uh, 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 upon death of Densho, uh, whatever would be the fair market value at the time of his death of this property donated to Migay, uh, that will be included in the gross estate. Hmm? And now, since this is donation inter vivos made by Densho, if Densho paid donor tax, kung siya ay nagbayad ng donor tax dyan, but there is still a uh, difference or discrepancy in the amount of the valuation, syempre mag-iiba yung tax supposedly to be paid. Uh, if it is kahit na sabihin natin at present times, no, under the train law, that no, yung CGT, yung donors, estate tax, nakapeg na lang siya at 6% uniform, no, there will still be difference because of the tax base no, and because of the valuation. Kasi fair market value at the time of donation, but for purposes of estate tax, fair market value at the time of death. And especially for real properties, that the valuation of real properties appreciates. Huh? But this is what? A transfer in contemplation of death. Because it is the thought of death that motivates Densho to transfer or donate his property to his friend. Eh? Now, how about 
if the house and lot was sold at its actual value of 1 million pesos, and after the sale, Dencho spent the entire amount before his death. Yon, na? Now, if it is, na? If it is sale, this is, was sold at its actual value of 1 million. Na? Remember, um, in our initial lecture, we distinguish gratuitous from onerous or remuneratory contracts. Na? As to, na? As to, uh, cost contracts may either be uh, onerous, gratuitous, or remuneratory. Now, if it is onerous or remuneratory and there is a gain, uh, and that will be subject to income tax. Uh, may be subject to income tax depending on whether it is the transaction is exempt, of course. Uh, but if it is gratuitous, subject to transfer tax. You know, either donors or estate tax. Now, this is at its actual value, the same. This is actually a bona fide sale for an adequate and full consideration in money or money's worth. Na? And this will not be na, part of the gross estate. Eh? Now, and the fact that Dencio spent the entire amount before his death, nothing left at the time of his death, na? Now, uh, this, uh, this is irrelevant for purposes of our uh, discussion on uh, gross estate. Huh? Okay. But this is a bona fide sale for an adequate and full consideration in money or money's worth and now uh, will not be, uh, will not form part of the uh, gross estate of our decedent. Huh? Now, how about if after the selling of the house and lot, Densho dies without being able to spend the money with the amount form part of the gross estate? Huh? Remember, Densho sold it uh, bought up with the sale for an adequate and full consideration arm's length transaction because equivalent naman to the value of the property at the time of the transfer. Huh? And in exchange of huh? in exchange of the house and lot, we have the money, cash. Huh? Now, will the, the amount for part of his gross estate? Yes, but it will not be a transfer in contemplation of death. It is not under the second category. This will be under the first category, the property or properties physically present and na uh, in the name of our decedent. Huh? Etong money, na no? the house and lot converted into cash. That cash itself will form part of the gross estate uh, but not under transfer in contemplation of death uh, ayun, na, na, this na, uh, question is again irrelevant on our discussion about transfer in contemplation of death now if shortly before he died he lent the entire amount to his friend boy Nato who issued a promissory note Will the receivable note form part of his gross estate? Yes, of course. Ah, but again, under the first category, by mga properties physically present in the estate of the decedent and properties no longer present in the second category, the promissory note or the receivable, should I say, now the accounts receivable, ah, the receivable now will form part of the gross estate of our decedent. Ah? Hindi yung property na. Uh, it is already the cash. Di ba? Yung cash that has been lent. Na, and, na, instead of the cash, yung receivable, na, that will form part of the gross estate. But again, not a transfer in contemplation of debt. Uh, now, we also have revocable transfers. Na? When we say revocable transfer, revocable vis-a-vis irrevocable. Pag revocable, you can still alter, amend, change, modify, na? Whoever is your transferee or beneficiary of that, na? Of your property. Na irrevocable. Na? Subject to modification. Change or na? Alteration. Now, when you say irrevocable, na? Whoever is the designated beneficiary, na? You can no longer change or modify. Uh, your 
ha? beneficiary. Irrevocable yun. This is revocable transfer. Now, gross estate shall include the value of any property which the decedent has at any time made transfer by trust or otherwise. Ha? This is with reserved power to alter, amend, revoke, or terminate. Now, where the enjoyment thereof was subject at the date of his death to any change through the exercise of a power uh, in whatever capacity exercisable by the decedent alone or by the decedent in conjunction with any other person without regard to when or from what source the decedent acquires such power you want to alter, amend, revoke, or terminate. Uh, quite complicated, ma'am. With such power relinquished, when any such power which would bring the property in the taxable estate is relinquished in contemplation of the decedent's death. Now, it is as simple as, say that there is a donor donated during his lifetime to a donee. In the deed of donation, there is this clause or proviso. Uh, revocatory clause. Pag sinabi natin revocatory clause, uh, that any time during his lifetime, he can still revoke the donation uh, granted to the donee. Pag ganyan na merong revocatory clause, eh? now, ultimately, uh, it is upon the demise or death of our decedent that the donee acquire the uh, or acquire full ownership. Ha? Kasi during the lifetime of the donor, anytime, if he would like to, ha? Ah, nagkaroon ng change of mind, that he would like to na, uh, revoke or change ha? or modify yung beneficiary. Ha? Nagkaroon ng misunderstanding between them that he would like to na, recover back the property and give it to someone else. Ha? Yo, na. Now that the that is the reason why revocable transfers. Ultimately, it is at the time of death of the decedent that the donee acquires absolute ownership. Now, wala nang condition because no, the donor can na cannot and na as no or will no longer revoke the fact that he is already dead. Yeah, yeah. Revocable transfers. Uh, revocable transfers, these are transfers made during lifetime, no longer uh, present in the estate of the decedent, but will be included in the gross estate uh, because it is the death that ultimately will transfer absolute ownership to the transferee or the domain. Uh, o tatandaan, dalawa na, uh, under the second category, the transfer in contemplation of death and revocable transfer. Eh? Now, atong donated real property worth 2 million to Mangundayaw during his lifetime. An item in the deed, however, grants the donor the right to revoke the donation at will. Is the 2 million pesos subject to donor's tax. Eh? Now, We na we the this is a transfer may na transfer may during lifetime and subject to donor's tax. But since this is a revocable, this is a revocable transfer. Na this is subject to estate tax. Na the fair market value of the na real property at the time of death will be included in the gross estate and supposedly not subject to donor's tax. Huh? But say, um, his friend would like to, uh, to Mangundayo. Now, Mangundayo would like to transfer the title in his name and there's a need for Atong to pay donor's tax to transfer the title in, uh, in the uh, name of Mangundayo. He will be paying donor's tax. But now, for all legal intents and purposes nga, Na, this is revocable transfer. BIR might assess for the na, difference in the valuation. Kasi nga, di ba? Fair market value at the time of donation, fair market value at the time of death, real property, the fair market value uh, of real properties appreciates, most probably there will be a difference. And uh, in the 
na assessment of the PIR na this property being a revocable made as a revocable transfer should form part of the gross estate. Eh? Now, the property passing under general power of appointment. Na? We need to distinguish general power of appointment from special power of appointment. Now, na? Uh, let us also correlate this with the exempt transfers. Na? Yung transfer from fiduciary heir to the fide commissary. Na? The transfer from the first heir... Na? To the second heir that is in accordance with the wishes of our na, transferor. Na, it has a relation with this property passing under general power of appointment that is to be distinguished from a special power of appointment because those exempt transfers that I mentioned correlates with special power of appointment. Again, I repeat that. Eh? Na, if the property na, na this na was a transfer made during lifetime if the property is under general power of appointment na, to be included in the gross estate if it is special power of appointment na, excluded or exempt transfer na, how would we know that that is general power of appointment Ito, na, if the donor can appoint any beneficiary Anybody, uh, including himself, his estate, his creditor, or creditors of his estate, then the appointment is general. If the donee or transferee has the discretion to choose who will be the next beneficiary of the property, that is general power of appointment. But if uh, the donees, uh, the donee can uh, cannot appoint na uh, someone. Because the transfer or his transfer or his donor eh, specified that he can only transfer it to a specified na uh, person uh, or beneficiary that is special. Uh, let us na uh, let us illustrate. Now, do mo a special power of appointment. Now, say that we have Mr. A. Mr. A donated a property to Mr. B. Uh, now, and there will be transfer of ownership to Mr. B. Now, in the date of donation, uh, in the date of donation, or even if it is last will and testament, huh? say last will and testament, basta donation siya, whether it be mortis causa or inter vivos. Now, naggawin na lang natin siyang donation, uh, inter vivos. In the date of donation, uh, A, uh, um, subject, uh, uh, a uh, A specified uh, in the donation that B can only transfer uh, the property to C uh, to C uh, as specified by A uh, that B cannot transfer it to anybody uh, any not uh, to not uh, to someone else. Uh, of his discretion he can only transfer it to C uh, in accordance with the will or in accordance with the uh, request or wishes of the transferor A hmm? pag specified lang kung kanino mo siya pwedeng donate si B uh, kung kanino mo siya pwedeng ma-transfer uh, special yun special power of appointment wala kang discretion hindi ka pwedeng mamili kung sino ang magiging na grantee or beneficiary na uh, subsequent to you na? because your transferor already specified who will be the next beneficiary kaya doon sa exempt transfers na? you will see yung na uh, transfer from the first heir legacy or donee in favor of another beneficiary in accordance with the wishes or desire of the predecessor tsaka from the fiduciary heir to the fide uh, to the fide commissary uh, specified ng transferor who will be the next beneficiary kaya exempt transfer yon uh, because the power of appointment is special power of appointment. Eh? 
But if the power of appointment is general, uh, general to anybody, A, donated to B, A, real property. Na? Ganun lang. In the date of donation, na, wala naman nakaspecify who will be the next beneficiary. Na? B, can transfer it to anybody na he would like to be the next beneficiary. Na? To anybody. And that makes the proper uh, or the power of appointment general power of appointment Ma'am question na if in both cases A dies ha A dies pero kasi meron na siyang ano eh meron na siyang tax consequence eh. kung yan ay donation mortis causa estate tax fair market value at the time of death if that is na donation inter vivos donors tax naman fair market value at the time of donation na we are referring to the second transfer ito ha eh. Now, sa general power of appointment, uh, now, B dies. Uh, B dies. And the property will be transferred to his heirs. Uh, kung meron siyang last will to any elderly uh, uh, provided that that will be uh, a device or a legacy uh, 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 designating uh, someone he would like to be the next beneficiary. No? Would that property be included in the gross estate of the no? decedent B? Yes. Kasi general yun. Huh? But uh, in the special power of appointment, say B dies. Huh? Now, in accordance with the deed of donation, no? na merong na condition doon that it can only transfer it to C as specified by A. Or even if it is a last will and testament of A to B, Uh, tapos meron yung condition that you can only transfer it to C na uh, in accordance with the will of A. Uh, B does not have any discretion. Wala siyang freedom uh, to choose who will be the next beneficiary. Would that property be included in the gross estate of B if the uh, power of appointment is special? Answer is no. Exempt transfer yun. Eh, huh? focus lang doon sa second transfer kasi wala nang na for the first transfer automatically naman subject to either estate or donor's tax. Ito be included in the gross estate or gross gain. Uh, for the first transfer, yung second transfer ang material. Uh, if it is by general power of appointment, na uh, that he can transfer it to anybody included in the gross estate. Na uh, if it is special power of appointment for in the transfer of the donor or the donor of the donor No? or no, even if it is by by last will and testament na no? by succession still no the transfer or specified will be the next beneficiary no exempt transfer yon with respect to the second no transfer from the donor to whoever is the specified no next beneficiary exempt yon it will not be included in the gross estate eh? Now, A died leaving a will whereby it was stipulated that his house or his lot situated in Fairview, Quezon City, shall go to B. And that should the, na, should the latter decide to transfer the property, is free to transfer it to anybody. Yon. Now, B has the freedom to choose who will be the next na, beneficiary. Is the power of appointment general or special? Anong answer natin dyan? Yeah, if the donee has the leeway to choose, has the discretion, has the freedom of choice, no? to choose who will be the next beneficiary, that is general power of appointment. Eh? How about if the will expressly provides that B can only appoint either of his parents? Huh? Oh, yeah, that makes it special. Ah, kasi wala nang no, choice yung ating donee si B to choose who will be the next beneficiary and he will just follow the instruction of his transferor A ah, and he can only appoint either of his parents that makes it a special power of appointment what is contemplated no? under no, the law no? the power of appointment must be general if the gen if this general power of appointment na huh, it will uh, be included in the gross estate of our decision